Hi there and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be taking you through examples of chi-squared for A-Level Biology. So just looking at the flow diagram we can see how you would choose this statistic. So this is the only statistic in A-Level Biology that you would use if your data that you've collected is frequencies. And what we mean by that is the data is counting individuals within particular categories. And it's to investigate a difference. So that's when we'll be using chi-squared. Now, as with all the statistics, you don't have to be able to calculate it in the exam. You only have to be able to justify your choice, write a null hypothesis and write the conclusion. So justifying your choice would be you're investigating or the experiment is an investigation looking at a difference between frequency data. So this is the calculation. Um, I'm gonna go through it with you because you may have to do it for part of a required practical. But as I said, you don't have to remember how to actually do this in the exam. So this example, we've got scientists are investigating whether there are any differences in the number of ivy plants in a shaded area and a light area. So first of all, the null hypothesis. So this experiment is looking at a difference and chi-squared is looking at a difference. So in the null hypothesis, you'd be stating there is no significant difference. And we say between the observed number of ivy plants and the expected number of ivy plants in the shaded and light area. So you have to include this concept of what you observed compared to what you expect because in the chi-squared statistic, that is what is being compared. The data you collected is what you observed. What you expect, we typically say would be 50-50 split, so an equal split between the categories. There are exceptions to that. Um, it could be if you've got multiple groups, there are ways that you can calculate the expected. And if it's genetics, you're looking at the number of individuals with um, brown hair versus blonde hair, you might have expected ratios which link to Punnett square data. But, but I'll do a whole other video on that because the genetics examples is quite a lot of detail. So we've got our shade and light area, the number of ivy we um, observed, the number we expected, and then the formula we said is the sum of the observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So what I've done first of all is the observed minus the expected, then squared, and then the sum of that column. Now we have the sum of the observed minus the expected squared. We can put that data into the rest of the formula. And the last stage is dividing that by the expected number, which in our case was 500. So we end up with a chi-squared value, which is really big here, 71.825. However, that does look correct because we can see we do have a big difference between those two values. So we would expect to get a big chi-squared. The final step is to work out what that chi-squared value actually tells us. And this is where you have to compare your calculated value to a critical value. Now I've just got the column here for p equals 0 0.05 and what that means is all of these critical values are for a p-value which is um, the probability that there will be 5% or there's 5% probability that the result in this case the difference is due to chance. Now to work out the degrees of freedom it would be our n minus 1, and this time n is the number of categories. Now, we just had light or dark area, so that's two categories minus 1. So we've only got one degree of freedom. So the critical value that we are comparing to is 3.84. We have to see, does our calculated value exceed or meet that threshold critical value? And it does by a long, long way. So what that tells us is, because it's exceeded the critical value at p equals 0 0.05, it means there is less than 5% probability 
that the difference between the observed and the expected values is due to chance. Now, if we think back to our null hypothesis, we were saying that the null hypothesis was there will be no difference between the observed number of plants in the two areas and the expected number in the two areas. But we can now reject that null hypothesis because we've proven there was a significant difference between what we observed and what we expected. And we expected there'd be no difference in the two areas. So therefore, this shows us there is a significant difference between the number of ivy leaves in the shade and light areas. So that is it for chi squared. If you are new here, then please click the subscribe button and give it a thumbs up if you have found that worked example helpful today.